Okay, welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to continue talking about question number five from the free response questions of the 2011 AP Calculus AB examination uh, form B. So in this video, we're going to talk just about parts C and D. Um, we did another video about uh, parts A and B of the question, which you can find if you want. But this one, we're going to talk about C and D. So for part C, it says, must there be a time in be for time between 40 and 60 where Ben's velocity is 2 meters per second? And justify your answer. And so a lot of people make the mistake in this one of saying no because between, two point, uh, between 40 and 60 on our table here, between this, on this interval of the time from 40 to 60, Ben starts going 2.5 meters per second, and then at the end he's going 4.6. So you look at that and say, well, if he starts at 2.5 and then at the end is going 4.6, there's no reason why he would have ever had to have been going 2 meters per second, because he could have just been continuously increasing his speed from 2.5 to 4.6, just slowly increasing that speed over that 20 second interval. But that's not possible because Ben only went a total of 40 meters in 20 seconds. And we know that because at the beginning he was 9 meters away and at the end he was at the beginning of the 40s of the interval he was at 9 meters per 9 meters away from the end of the track and at the end of the 20 second interval he was at 49 meters. That's only 40 meters. If you go 40 meters in 20 seconds, that's an average speed of, we can look at this here, so his average speed, or his average, I should say, velocity, is 49 minus 9 over 60 minus 40 which is an average velocity of 2 meters per second. So there's no way that he could have been going faster than that the entire time, or he would have gone way more than 40 meters. So the mean value theorem says that yes, yes is my answer, because... The mean value theorem says so. We abbreviate mean value theorem MVT. Yes, because the mean value theorem says our continuous function, continuous function must. Take on the average rate. Excuse me, here I ran out of room. Must take on the average rate of change on an interval. at some point in the interval. And if that's maybe a little bit confusing to you, you can look up what the mean value theorem says and see a more precise definition of it. But that's basically what it says. A continuous function, oops, I forgot the word function there, didn't I? A continuous function, let's add function in there, a continuous function must take on the average rate of change on an interval at some point in the interval. So the velocity must be 2 meters per second because that's my average rate of change for the interval from, six, from 40 to 60. So at some point we had to have been going 
2 meters per second. That's what the mean value theorem for derivatives says. Okay. Let's go on and complete question number 5. In part D, it says that a light is directly above the western end of the track. And Ben rides so that at time t, the distance L of t between Ben and the light satisfies the equation L of t squared is equal to 12 squared plus B of t squared. At what rate is the distance between Ben and the light changing at time t equals 40? Well, hopefully when you see this equation, this L of t squared equals 12 squared plus B of t squared, you're thinking, oh, this looks like Pythagorean theorem. So we're thinking that I've got this light here, and then there's Ben riding away, and then there's this distance between Ben and the light. And that's the distance here that they're talking about, L of t right there. And then on the bottom, that's of course B of t, which is the distance between Ben and the western end of the track. And I realize I sort of drew this backwards. <laughs> I put, oh no, we're okay. North, east, south, west, we're okay. <laughs> um, so Ben's riding away from the western end of the track. And there's this light, and then there's the, the hypotenuse is sort of the distance between the light and Ben. So we want to know what's the rate at which L of t is changing. So we recognize, well, we're talking about a rate. There, are, So we look at a derivative. And because we have two different things here, we have an L of t and we have a B of t, we need to differentiate implicitly both of them with respect to time. So we're going to get 2 times L of t, but then times dL dt equals, well, 12 squared is 144, but the derivative of 12 squared is 0. It's a constant. So I'm going to put 0 just so we remember. Plus the derivative of b of t squared is going to be the same as L of t squared, except with b's instead of l's. So I use my power rule, 2 times b of t times the derivative of b of t with respect to time, which is d b d t. And we're looking at at what rate is the distance between Ben and the light changing at time t equals 40. So 40... 40. So I know already that b of t at 40 is 9, and db dt, which is velocity, the rate of change of position, is 2.5. So I can plug those things in. Um, but I don't know what l of t is, and I don't know what dl dt is. It's good that I don't know what dl dt is, because that's what they're asking for. They want the rate at which L is changing. So I'm going to circle that and say that that's what I'm looking for here. But I've got to first find L of t at time t equals 40. And that we can do using the original equation. So L of t, let's maybe move this just a little bit here. L of t, I don't want that green anymore. So we have L of t squared is equal to, whoops, 144, the 12 squared, plus um, B of t at 40, which was 9 squared. And so I just need to solve that. And so L of t squared is equal to 144 plus 81, which is 225. That's, again, L of t squared. So then I square root things, and this was L of 40 now equals... 15.
So now I know that, and so now I can plug it in over here um, to find DLDT. Uh, I'm just going to cancel out the two that's on each side. I'm just going to divide that out here. And so now I know that L of T is 15, so I have 15 DL dt is equal to b of t which we said was 9 and then db dt which we can see from the table is 2.5 and now we just solve for dl dt and so 9 times 2.5 is uh, 22.5, so I have 15 dl dt is equal to 22.5 divide by 15. Um, so then dl dt is equal to 22.5 over 15. You could leave your answer like that or you could simplify and say that that's 1.5 meters per second. And that is the rate at which the distance between Ben and the light is changing at time t equals 40. Just a simple related rates problem here. Um, so shouldn't be too bad I don't think. Okay, so that is parts C and D from question number 5 on the 2011 AP Calculus AB exam form B. Okay.